Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of our weekly physics series, Fun Physics Folks. I'm your host, Vector, and today we will be covering a highly requested topic, the physics behind baseball. Now, baseball is a very interesting sport in my opinion, and it is quite difficult to say the least, but in order to maximize your performance, you do need to know some of the fundamental physics concepts that are a part of the sport. So, let's slide up right into this, shall we? You just saw a solid baseball swing by me, Vector, which will be followed by an extraordinary swing by MLB star Mike Trout. Looking at my swing, you can probably see that the ball traveled off the bat quickly and was launched at approximately a 45 degree angle, which is optimal for increasing the range or distance of projectiles, but it would be merely an average hit in Trout's book. Many different physics concepts go into creating an elite swing such as his, and I want to be able to teach you guys how to make every aspect of your swing better using physics. Notice how Trout loads his hands by bringing them back before swinging. Doing this, he is able to generate more force in his swing because his hands have more time to accelerate the bat through the zone before impact. Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, will help us understand how Trout generates as much force as he does. Assuming that each bat used by an MLB player is the same mass, which is the case for most players, you can say that force and acceleration are proportional. Acceleration, or velocity over time, can be maximized using the strategy that Trout uses, creating more distance between your initial hand position and the position at the point of impact. This strategy would allow any player to increase the acceleration of their bet, because the further it travels in that split second, the higher the velocity, and during this brief instant, the higher the velocity over time as well. Another key component to Trout's sweet swing is his balance. When he plants his foot down, his body weight is evenly distributed. Balance allows Trout to shift his weight forward while swinging. Not only does he generate more acceleration in his swing by doing this, he also obtains the ability uh, to stride towards the ball, creating a more forceful swing using his legs and his entire body weight. Now, Newton's first law states that every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. In baseball, an external force would be the bat accelerating towards the ball and impacting the ball, because the thrown ball is a projectile traveling at a constant velocity through the air. Therefore, impact from the bat causes the ball to change its state of motion and start its path in the opposite direction. But what does it do once it's in the air? Now. That is hammered out to deep left field. Forget about it. Big fly for Mike Trout and the Angels have tied this one up and won. You just saw an in-game depiction of, of Trout's sensational hitting abilities, and you're probably wondering, how did that ball travel so far? Well, the first important thing to note is that the optimal launch angle for hitting a baseball is not actually 45 degrees. This is mainly due to the rotation of the ball in flight. When hit into the air, a baseball has backspin, causing more air to flow under the ball, which lifts it higher into the air. Also, air resistance, commonly referred to as drag force, impedes the ball's path throughout its flight. So, even though the equation maximum range equals initial velocity squared sine 2 theta over gravity suggests that 45 would be the optimal angle, the horizontal distance that a ball travels can really be maximized by a 29 degree launch angle because of the external factors explained. If a ball is projected at an angle greater than 29 degrees, it will go higher into the air, but not as far as a ball, not as far as a ball with the same initial velocity launched at 29 degrees. If it is projected at less than 29 degrees, the third factor, gravity, will pull the ball 
to the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared without giving it enough time to travel horizontally. In other words, the hardest hit ball with a zero degree launch angle will rarely meet the distance of a 29 degree hit with a much lower initial velocity, only because it does not have enough time to travel through the air. If you think back to any of Mike Trout's best home runs, you will find that most of them hover right around that 30 range for launch angles, and most are tracked at having exit velocities of 90 miles per hour or greater, which is the inif initial velocity of the hit. Trout might not think physics when he goes up to bat, but he definitely takes the concepts of gravity, projectile motion, and resistance factors and uses them to his advantage while hitting a baseball. Gone forever! So there you have it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the physics of baseball. I hope you all enjoyed and learned a little something, too. Once again, my name is Vector, and I'll see you guys next week on our next episode of Fun Physics, folks.